G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I've got a bit of an announcement to make. If you've been on my channel for a while now, you know that my cousin Adam has a fish room as well. In fact, he's gone through two fish rooms. His very first fish room, he was really keen to start the hobby and he got all these different tanks and it kind of looked untidy in his fish room, but it was a very, very productive fish room. Then he progressed into a smaller fish room where he had a nice rack of tanks and uh, made all the tanks look really beautiful and I've showcased that fish room on my channel. If you haven't seen those videos, you can watch the full playlist right here. However, he has decided to build a brand new fish room, a third fish room at his house. The first fish room he had has been decommissioned, but there are two tanks in that fish room that are still running that he's got to move over into the brand new fish room. However, today I'm gonna to be showing you the plan that he has for his brand new fish room, as well as some progress videos that he's made on the build of his brand new fish room. So let's get into the video and I'll show you what he's done. This is the floor plan for the new fish room that I'm working on. So it's gonna live in one of my garages. So the entrance to it is down in the bottom left. You can see that's marked entrance door. When you walk into the entrance, there'll be a cavity door which will take you into the bathroom slash laundry. And on the right, there'll be a door which will take you into the fish room itself. So the fish room dimensions are 3.2 meters by 3.5, and this image is to scale. So the racks I've drawn in gray, they've been designed the way they have to try and get best use out of all the tanks that I already have. The only tanks that I will need to buy will be for that central rack in the middle of the room. So the blue line that's drawn around the room, that is where I'm going to run my central airline hose on the ceiling and then I'll have all airlines dropping down to the tanks. So I'll just give you a quick walk through each of the different racks. So the north rocks rack, which would be on the right of the room, that is going to house 12 two foot tanks these are these black tanks it's essentially going to be just moving the two racks that i have now in my existing fish room and then beside that i had a really narrow rack there which i marked as a live food rack i'm just going to have some smaller tanks there just so i can keep some daphnia black worm and branch room cultures going in the middle of the room central rack this is going to house um, some tanks that i'm going to need to buy to get six three foot long by two foot wide by just over one foot deep tanks and i'm planning on making some really good dividers so that i could split them up into six two footers as shown on the top shelf or into a three by one as shown in the middle shelf just to give me a bit of flexibility so i'm going to need to get these tanks made looking back at the fish room again the third rack is the right. rack i already have these tanks in my old fish room so i'm planning to only have um, two tier with a gap under the bottom for some storage for foam boxes and buckets and hoses etc so i have 10 of these tanks already um, and they're two foot long by 450 high by 350 wide so i'm planning on using these as grow outs and quarantine tanks i'm not going to escape or decorate these really then if we look down the bottom I've got what's called the short rack, and that's because it's not gonna be very high because I plan on mounting an aircon above them. So that is gonna house my four footer on the bottom and then two more of those black two foot tanks above it. So that is my plan. It's probably gonna fit, depends on how I configure the tanks with dividers in that central rack. It's gonna fit 40 to 50 ish tanks. So I'm expanding because I think if I make this room well insulated and I run the airline properly and I'm gonna set up irrigation and hoses on my tanks to make water changes easy, I will be able to maintain the larger number of tanks as easily as I'm maintaining my current number of tanks now and be able to breed a lot more fish. There's a lot more fish that I'm interested in getting, but I just don't have the number of tanks now. So that's why I, want to expand again um, but this time i want to do it properly um, so it's going to take me a while because i'm going to build it properly so that if things change in the future and i want to get rid of the fish or you know i move or something like that this will not be a wasted venture essentially this could be used as a little studio or a guest house or something like that so it's going to take me a while to do but i've already got good progress yeah so when it's done i'm still gonna focus on the smaller kind of dwarfish cichlids so i still like my tanganikans i like um, my dwarf americans so the epistos and there's a couple of other things like a nanakara that i want to get into 
but I just don't have the room at the moment. I'd also like to breed some angels and I want to get into line breeding some colorful guppies and also some shrimp. So that's the reason for the expansion, pretty much just so I can give myself more opportunity to get more fish, really, that I'm interested in trying to breed. Alright, I'll just finish off the formwork for the floor. So we've got our first two rows of bricks here. So that's going to be the top of the floor on this end and I've laid the timber formwork around the edges so the cement's going to sit up underneath the timber so that's the level um, so yeah I'm going to need a lot less sand and cement than I thought because up here is actually almost level it's really high on that side and it only really falls toward the end here but this side we can't see all the crap in the way but um, the fall is a lot bigger um, so it's mainly falls at the front here so yeah this is where where this timber is that's where there's going to be a wall that way so there will be a doorway here to get into this room um, yeah so the way I constructed the form work it should allow us to get a really flat finish on the cement bed because what I'm going to do is my father-in-law has got a really big straight edge that we use he uses for concreting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick one of these timbers underneath it so that we can rest the straight edge on this and I have this underneath it so it's the same thickness so we should be able to essentially sit the straight edge on this and move it back and forth and then, um, yeah, because this is underneath it, it should finish level with the, with the timber. So, hopefully it all works out. I really should only just have to buy maybe 10 bags of cement. Um, and my father-in-law and I should be able to mix it all. We'll probably do it in half a day, he said. Um, so, yeah, hopefully this gets sorted in the next couple of days. Took about three hours to do between two of us. So let it cure. It should dry tonight. Be able to walk on it tomorrow. Give it a little bit of a sprinkle so it can help it harden a bit more. Um, yeah, happy days. So once it's <clears throat> done and I can walk on it everything properly, I will be removing the ceiling, moving all this crap out, taking out that window, taking out that window, and then I'll start putting in the timber studs in, because I'm gonna chip rock over those columns. So that cavity will be filled with thick insulation and timber frame, and same as that, and I'll obviously still have a new window. And then this side, I have to start and in, insulate in there and start and insulate in there. So this half of the room that has the lower floor, I'm not going to insulate here because this is going to be like a bathroom and entrance. So it doesn't need insulation only where the new slab has been poured. And once the frames are in, <clears throat> order windows for there. I've actually got a beautiful stained glass window for there. Um, and then I will get plumb up an electrician <clears throat> in to run um, the copper and the cable, then chip rocking time, then painting, then once all of that is done, I will get a tiler. I was considering tiling all this myself because I have tiled a fair few places now. Um, because it's such a small area, I think I'll get a quote first if it's not too much, then I'll get it professionally done to just give it a nice good finish. So made progress on the wall studs today so I put I've got to put noggins in obviously and I've got to screw them these are only nail gunned in at the moment did that wall that cavity and that one so I've only been able to work on it for about two hours today um, so next I will be pulling out window doing framework for there 
And then once that's done, I will do framework for this wall here. Yeah, I still need to buy more timber, but hardware shop didn't have enough when I went yesterday. Okay, well, a day of progress. So <clears throat> I put in the wall, this dividing wall, and the door frame as well. So that's the door to the fish room. Um, I finished putting in like the supporting noggins for the window. That plastic I've just put in a couple of studs to hold it in case we get some rain. Um, yeah, so this was a big, big job getting this level straight. Um, but I'm happy with it how it came out. So this door opening, the door jams for an 820 door. Um, so I'm probably going to get a solid core door just for better insulation. Um, and then I started doing the framework for the wall here for the bathroom slash laundry. Um, but I've run out of the blue beams that I need to finish this wall off. So all of the walls that have a door jam, this one and this one, um, are 90 mil studs rather than 70. So the blue ones are 90 mil, just easier for the doors. So I've put in this upright, I put in the floor piece one upright, the header, I need to buy more so that I can put the one down here and put another vertical one from that foot up and then work out where the doorway, I have to do the door frame and then put another vertical, then supports. Yeah, so it's getting there and obviously I need to put vertical supports in this wall, but I didn't because I didn't have enough timber. Getting there, so I'm gonna put between this cavity, these columns, I'm gonna put in a stud wall there. Um, and I'm not gonna put in stud wall over this. Um, this one, don't need to because the fibro will finish flush this way. So I don't need to lose this amount of width coming this way. I'll just go straight over the wall. Okay, so another good afternoon of progress. I picked up the extra timber I needed. So I put in the second stud here for that side of the door jam, put in the header, and I put in the cavity door frame. So it looks like it's all good and square, and I've left myself a bit of room to play here with packers and then the door jam. Um, so I think I've installed it correctly. Um, yeah, and then I put in the supporting studs for that wall so you can actually see now you get a feel for how big that room is going to be so <clears throat> it's going to be it's just over it's like 3.2 this way and from this wall to the wall i put in it's a almost 3.6 it's like 3.56 or something um but yeah once gyp rocked etc be just just over 3.5 meters yeah so happy i only got like three hours this afternoon to work on it so i'm happy that i got that door the cavity door frame in and then um finish that wall off so i'm leaving all the noggins until the end so that i can just make the best of um of all the offcuts so Today I bought the door jam for the external, so it's re double rebated, so I can have a security door on the outside and solid core door on the inside. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to work on next, um, so that I can then close this opening in, so I take this door out, and unfortunately I'm going to have to remove a row of bricks off the top, because the height is too short for a door it's only it's like 1.85 you can see this door how it's been cut bottom and top just to fit in there to close it off um, yeah so it's definitely not like i'm nearly as tall as it so it's gonna be a fun job knocking those bricks out 
So there you have it guys, Adam's brand new fish room build. I really hope you enjoyed this brand new series because we're gonna be taking a deep dive into the progress that Adam has with his fish room build. And that includes how Adam picks the size of the tanks that he wants for his fish room. That can be a difficult and challenging decision to make when building and designing a fish room, as well as how he's gonna set up his water change process. I really do think you're gonna find those videos really informative and useful for your own builds. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on those future videos. Also, I just want to acknowledge the guys who supported me in my November 2020 fish room update. I had some bad news in that video that I wanted to share with you guys, and I can't believe the outpouring of support that I've received from you all. So I really do appreciate that, and I just want to say thanks and acknowledge that support. So thanks guys, I really do appreciate it. It really does motivate me to continue to produce content for you guys, as well as look after my fish room. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.